Okay, so we're uh review worksheet five. Just do like a rhythm graph. Uh, if you've already done it, you can just try it again on the separate sheets and just use this as um, page four, number 10. All right. So uh, we're looking at an F prime graph. So we want to label accordingly. Above and below, positive, negative slope on the x axis, slope zero. So first things first, let's find our x intercepts. So x intercepts will be negative four. Two and four, those will go on to the F prime slope sign line. <clears throat> Above the x axis means positive slope, below the x axis means negative slope. So between negative six and negative four, this portion of the graph is clearly below the x-axis, so a negative slope. Between negative four and two, this portion is clearly above the x-axis, so a positive slope. From two to four, still a positive slope. From four to five, below negative slope. Wait, how do you know that the slopes are positive? Uh, we look to see, we look at the lo location. Is it above the x axis, which is positive slope, or below the x axis, which is negative slope? Yeah. 
since we're dealing with an F prime graph, everything on the Y axis represents slope values. So this, all these are positive slope values. <laughs> F double prime. Now we're looking for concavity of the original graph. So the way we pull concavity information from F prime about the original graph is we look at the peaks and valleys. The chart that uh, we've created here, um, if we're looking at the F prime graph, the max and mins of the F prime will indicate the points of inflection of the original graph. So it's going to sit at negative two, two, and three. Would it be cause statements? Would it be like f of x is increasing with blank because f prime is greater than zero? That's right. And is it the same for concavity? Uh, concavity will be where, yeah. So we'll do one of each state. Well, we'll. We'll, we'll do an example statement, but it'll be uh, uh, concave up would be because F double prime is greater than zero. Okay. Yeah. All right, so now we look at the slope. Okay. The po positive slope on the F prime graph indicates what on the original graph. What is positive slope on that prime okay. concave up? Yeah. Negative slope on my F prime graph indicates that my original graph is concave down. Positive slope is concave up. Negative slope is concave down. Okay, next, we can move into sketching our graph, our f of x graph. We have some anchor points to work with. Negative 6, 3. And 5, 8. So now <clears throat> we want to ignore the F prime graph. The F prime graph is not going to help us anymore. It's going to distract us. We're just going to focus on our F prime sign line because the, the way the arrows are pointing is how we want our graph to move. So what do you expect that negative four? Relative what? Min, okay. There's a there's a um, critical point at two. Anytime you see a tick mark, that just means that the graph is going to have to level off. There's going to have a, a moment of slope zero, even if it is not a relative max relative min. There's going to be a slope zero momentarily, continues rising, hits a relative max at four, and then falls after that. So I'm going to give myself some targets here. Negative four. I want a relative minimum. I'm looking here at my range. My range is from one to ten. So I'm already thinking about maybe I just have that negative or hit that minimum at one. Okay. And it's going to rise to some uh, value at two. Somewhere in the middle because it's not going to continue. It's not going to hit a max yet. Continues rising and then hit a max at four. So this should be the absolute max here, and that's going to be up at 10. So this is at 8, so 9, 10, somewhere up here. Just trying to map out my path before I sketch it. So now I can sketch my graph and follow the, follow the movement of my arrows. My graph is falling up until negative 4. It's a relative minimum. Rises. 
flattens out at two, continues rising to max at four, and then falls until I reach my end point. Like five eight. I don't know why I skipped all the way over there. Just be here. There we go. Okay. If you came in late, we're on uh, worksheet five, page four. Some of you may have already done it. You can just do on a separate sheet or look at the problems and do on a separate sheet. All right. Any questions about uh, the graph? We haven't finished yet. We, well, we have the basic outline. Uh, now we're going to go and um, give it the proper curvature in each sub interval. So now, uh, point of inflection at negative two. So wherever your graph lands at negative two, I'll highlight that point. Wherever your graph lands at two, we can highlight that point. Wherever your graph lands at three, we can highlight that point. Okay. So match our shape here, concave up, followed by concave down. Followed by concave, and then followed by concave down. Right. Any questions? Next up, F double prime graph. F double prime graph. You're going to pull from just your second derivative sine line. Remember the chart that we made here. Um, if I'm looking for a point of inflection off of the second derivative graph, I'm looking at the x-intercept. So we know that all these uh, points of inflections will have to land on the x-axis of my f double prime graph. So negative two, two, and three. All right, so we're just kind of threading between these points here. Where are we going to start? What does that concave up tell us? We're going to start above, right, above the x-axis. And highlighting these points is a good place to start because you know the graph has to go through those points. So I'm going to start above at this point from negative 2 to 2, below 2 to 3, above, and to the right of 3, below. Any questions? All right, so I want you to write a couple of more statements here. Can you identify the relative minimum? Can you identify interval increasing? Can you identify interval concave up? And then can you identify a point of inflection? Each of these will have <clears throat> uh, a because statement associated with it. 
So, and the only thing you need are your sign lines to gather that information. So relative minimum. X equals negative four. Because what's our reasoning? Because what? Uh, the next two lines from negative to positive. F prime. F prime, yeah. So uh, it's the slope that's changing. F prime changes. from negative to positive. Okay. Next up, interval increase. Look at the arrows that are pointing up. Okay, what's our reasoning? Because, yeah, good, F prime, because F prime of X is positive or greater than zero. Concave up, we have two intervals of concave up. What's our reasoning? Because? Mm -hmm. Good. All right, points of inflection. Negative two and two, right? And three. There's change in signs, change in uh, signs in each of these points. Yeah. Now, if there were no change in signs, if they're both concave up or both concave down, then we would skip two. What's our reasoning? Yeah, F double prime. I pay attention to these because statements. I find these to be pretty easy, pretty straightforward, but there's always a handful of students who miss points because they didn't include because statements or they indicated the wrong function or they didn't provide enough details. So those should be these should be easy points. All right, uh, let's go to page six. Let's do the last optimization problem in this worksheet pod. Give me a second here. Camera disconnected. Let me see.
Okay, close top here. Um, volume of 20 cubic meters. Um, length of the base is five times the width, so I have X, 5X, and H. Volume is length times width times height, so X times 5X times H, so V equals 5X squared H. I have a restriction with volume. Volume is 20 cubic meters. 20 divided by 5x squared. I can leave it like that, or I can reduce it. It makes it a little bit easier when I plug in. So 4 over x squared is my h. Okay, next up, surface area. Closed top. So we have six sides, six surfaces, six rectangles we have to account for. So the base is the most, uh, yeah, so uh, let's build out each of them. So uh, let's start with the base. What's the area of the base? 5x squared. If, if, there, if the base is 5x squared, then the top is also what? 5x squared, okay. I don't want to combine it just yet. I think uh, um, the cost is going to be just the base being the more expensive material. What about uh, what about the the larger vertical side? What is the area of this panel here? X H. Yeah, there's an X H, but I'm going to do this one first. This one is what? Oh, five X H. Yeah. If there's a five X H on one side, there must also be a five X H on the other side. What about this smaller one? This XH. If there's an XH on one side, there's an XH on the other. We should have six sides accounted for. One, two, three, four, five, six. In this case, um, you know, sometimes we got to read the problem, right? Sometimes the top and bottom use the same material. This one, the material is only, the more expensive one is only for the base. Everything else is using the $4 per square meters. So. It will multiply four through uh, all the other five sides, but the $20 is through the base. Okay, do we, do we plug it in for X or do we just multiply by like the... Uh, what do you mean? Like, yeah, so we have to distribute the four through each of these terms. So, yeah, uh, treat this like I'm distributing a four through each of these terms. Yeah. So, four times five x squared. And then four times five, 20. Four times five is 20. Four times one is four. Four times one is four. So, all this is 48 XH. Are we good so far? Replace the H with what we have gathered from our volume information. And after we make that substitution, then we're just off to trying to get it ready for power rule, right? Um, could you sub the volume information into the H in before you multiply the, the four? Sure, yeah, you do that. Yeah, we should get the same result. Um, are you not allowed to- Oh, sorry, let me change this. Now that I have my dollar amount, this should update to a cost equation now, now that I have yeah, question. Um, could you not combine the 100x squared plus 20x squared to just 120? Yes, yeah, that yeah, that'll be my next step. Now I'm now I'm looking for like terms. Um, I'm gonna multiply through, yeah. So um we're not yeah.
Right. So 100 x squared plus 20 x squared is 120 x squared. 48 times x times 4 over x squared gives me 192 x over x squared. And clean that up. Continue getting it ready for power rule by bringing that x up to the top. Once I have that ready, I can find C prime. Going through power rule, set C prime equal to zero, solve for X, get the Q root. So once I solve for X, read the problem, what are they asking for? Are they asking for surface area? Are they asking for dimensions? Are they asking for the height? Are they asking for the cost? This problem is asking for the cost, so we'll take that X, plug it back into our cost equation. Okay, sorry to cut this short, but I have a meeting 745. So uh, what I would suggest is um, off of remember the homework that we did uh, a few days ago, page eight. This is a good curve sketching problem. So you may want to try this one again. Um, but I have a meeting in here, it's on Teams, so um, you guys will have to leave and then come back when class begins. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Oh, which one? This one here? No, the problem we just did. Okay, here. Oh, thank you. Switch over here. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 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 Thank you.